take us deeper. Lord God, that you take us deeper, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, deeper in your presence, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, Lord God. We thank you for your spirit being present, Lord God. We thank you that you're present, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just give you praise this morning. We just give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. my privilege to ask Pastor Mike to come up here and preach. It's been a while. Amen. Give him a hand as he comes. Hallelujah. This is my pastor. This is my pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Many of you, he's been your pastor. If he's been your pastor, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's been a lot of people come in and out of this church that's been ministered to, that's moved into the ministry because of the ministry of this man that God, God's used him. Amen. So I'm so grateful to have you come and preach today. Amen. It is good to be back in the pulpit. I was uh, sharing a humorous story. Um, when the pandemic began, the last time I had preached outside of this Wednesday night was in February. And uh, I had planned to uh, do a lot of uh, speaking out. And that didn't work out because of what everything has been going on. I was at uh, Jamie Bennett's church, a little uh, Pioneer, Pioneer Church, Assemblies of God Church, and uh, he had word from the uh, uh, district council that because of the pandemic and uh, that they were to close their doors until this thing kind of died down. And I thought, man, I've been closed the church up here. I have my first message to the church, church and then close it the next day, you know. But uh, God's in control. He knows all things, doesn't he? Amen. 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 It is uh, uh, just uh, uh, want to share a few things few thoughts and and uh, my precious daughter is here and her husband Steve you all know very well and, and, uh, back here, in heaven. and uh, my new son of uh, three and a half years or so now and his wife uh, uh, Robbie and Tammy oh, I forgot your name <laughs> yeah and Not uh, you. yeah really. and Abigail granddaughter now and friend that's with her today is Kristen. Yes. Amen. And uh, it was good to have them here with you. Praise God. I wish I could let my daughter sing this this uh, morning. Sorry, 15 after 12. And uh, But uh, we'll just get into the word here in just a second. But just uh, just letting you know that I love you all. It is good to be back here in the house of God. Last time I preached, it was behind a, a solid pulpit, you know, you couldn't see through. And I always, uh, uh, some had suggested to me before about getting in a pulpit like this. And I said, no, I always feel conscious about this. I would like to make sure that that if I feel that I need to check to make sure I'm zipped up, or if you're not, you know, that, that you, you all can't see any of that going on. And uh, uh, it was uh, back a few years ago when... When uh, Patrick was getting ready to preach, and he was on the pulpit with me, and he was sitting back there, and and um, he was uh, um, uh, all ears to hear what I had to say. And so I was telling Patrick, I said, Patrick, for you on the pulpit, there's all, there's several things you always need to check and make sure. He said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? I said, Well, you gotta make sure you got your Bible, and make sure you got your message, and he's been preaching to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, And make sure you zipped up and look down real quick. You know? <laughs> Well, so much for my humor. As we, if you have your Bibles today, by the way, it's, it's, uh, um, I could share about so many ones of you that are here today that mean so much and a history that goes with each of you all. But uh, praise God. I'm honored that uh, my wife, Gloria, is here with us today. Appreciate her, appreciate her backing me in the ministry and, and uh, her faithfulness. Many times, even though I haven't been preaching, and she's always preaching, or, or, or not preaching, maybe preaching too, but <laughs> she's always saying in our, in our prayers every day that, that uh, Lord help Mike to begin to be able to get out and preach again. And uh, so this is kind of an answer to your prayer right there. Amen. 
But uh, if you turn with me over to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And that 12th chapter, it's a scripture I have used here through the years of preaching and dealing with all that's going on today. I thought it was very right on, spot on to what we have. If you, if you have your Bibles, and you stand with me in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. If you have your Bibles, you look to the air and say after me, this is God's Word. Is God's word. I believe it's the absolute truth. I believe it's, absolute truth. I believe it's inspired of the Holy Ghost. I believe, inspired of the Holy Ghost. I believe I can pattern my life after I believe I can pattern my life. Amen. Amen. In that 12th chapter, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are uh, encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run the race uh, with patience that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, for, uh, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. Father, thank you for the word of God. Lord, today, Lord, as I pray to uh, to speak your word, Lord, let it touch hearts and lives, be glorified through it in the name of the Lord. And everyone say amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise God. As I was thinking about this scripture today, there's another scripture in the same chapter toward the end of it, the 27th verse. It says, what things will be shaken will be shaken. And only that which is pure will last. We're living in a time when we see our world shaken from everything we've known it to be. When our, the government has, has been able to come in and, and, and tell us the size of groups we could have in our church to tell us if we could sing or not, if we could do these things, how many people could be in a restaurant and all this sort of thing. Though, you know, uh, uh, our little favorite uh, Walmart, uh, they were uh, somehow there. They, they don't uh, have a chance to catch any diseases there, you know. But you could catch it in church this morning. And, uh, but uh, with all that being said, and the, the, all the, uh, the, the, the uproar in America, the, the fighting, the, the um, um, protesting, and the uh, supposedly peaceable, peace, peaceful uh, gatherings that they have were, were Lives have been hurt, and people have been killed, and buildings destroyed, and and you know if you if you think on these things all the time, anger will begin to build up in you. Amen. You know, black lives matter, blue lives matter, all lives matter. You know, Amen. and uh, and uh, some people have, have have allowed these things, the 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 anger, the the uh, of this world, of what's happening, and and. Uh, uh, to build up, and, and when we think of our, our politics, our government, of who's going to be voted on, and we're for this one or for that one, and so on, the anger that's built up, and I feel it was rising in my soul many times, and I, I thank God for the word of the Lord that can bring us peace, Amen. because it says, looking unto Jesus, yes. the author Amen. and the finisher of our faith. Look unto him who had such contradictions, who, who the whole world, it seemed like they hated him, despised him, abused him, hung him on a cross. Little did they know that they nailed our Savior to a cross, but it was Jesus who willingly laid his life down and put his hands out there for the nails to, to be even be driven into. Do they know that the love of God is being shed abroad and their hatred for such a man? And we see the hatred of that, that same spirit and that same devil in the world today. It's the peace of God that helps us. When we think of the things that have been shaken, finances. We think of the health that's been shaken. Many of us have gone through times recently and in times past where we've lost loved ones and it's shaken us. When we've, when we've lost uh, friends, and, uh, family, when we've, we've seen so much terrible going on, murders, I was just looking, uh, some little thing that comes on my phone every morning and tells you the breaking news and telling how many people were shot in Louisville last night and 
just it's sad, you know. It's sad that uh, that uh, I can't get down there to uh, Joe's Crab Shack. <laughs> <laughs> that on the river. That's sad. That's you. So many of you know I like to go down there and eat, and then so not necessarily the best place to try to go right now. And uh, but. Uh, but, it was, but it's sad how, how, how our world is so shook up. And as we think of those things, and we think of the end of times when we've often wondered, you know, how could we ever have a one world government? How could we ever, with America the way it is, could ever bow down to one person to over all nations? How could we ever come to a place of a one world citizenship or a one world uh, money system and all these things? And... and it's times like this that makes me realize it's probably easier than we think when we get scared over a, uh, a sickness, over a, what do we call it, a uh, pandemic. Yet we know it's real. We're, we're not denying this at all when we think of our loved ones and some that has gone before us that, that we love so much that we lost the carvers and how that Brings it, so brings it home to the truth then, you know. And uh, I've known uh, Tabitha, I guess, uh, I was trying to think, her and Heather must be close to the same age. I'm not sure exactly who was the oldest, but Heather was two years old when we started <laughs> pastoring the, the church out here, Pioneer, and then they were two were together and, and everything. And uh, uh, it's just been a great run. Been a great race I've ran and still running until the day that Jesus takes me home. Amen. It's a great day, Sean, when we think of well, what's, what's ahead is better yet. Amen. Something's better on the way. Amen. Heaven is close. Amen. I like uh, with my uh, cousin in Louisville, uh, Bob Rogers, uses a, a, a thing that he always says that the God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. Amen. How true it is. Amen. How good God really is. How bad the devil really is, and how he's not to destroy us, but God's going to give us life and more abundance. Amen. More abundance. Hallelujah. As we look at these scriptures this morning, and we and thinking of the, of the, the, the what's going on in our, in our political realm, and I uh, uh, pulled something off the internet I wanted to read this morning, and I'm not sure which way you're voting, and that's up to you, that's between you and your Lord, our God, of how you vote on it, but when we think of, uh, um, and I'm probably not even supposed to get this political in the pulpit, but when we think of our, our Vice President, uh, Joe Biden, that uh, made statements like this when he, was, when he was, took the sides of uh, the LGBT, uh, BT, I don't know why they just don't call it what it is instead of giving it all. The ABCs and all this sort of stuff, you know? But uh, when, he, when he said, according to Joe Biden, the American Bible, believing Christians who take the Bible literally is in violation of the rights of the LB, LGBT by trusting in God's word. Now that's, that's scary. That so much of the popularity of even our U.S. can overlook what God says versus what man wants. When we think about in our country when it's all getting to the place of we throw the Bible to the side, it just has a place here in the church, don't mention anywhere else. Getting to the place where one day that good gospel preaching will be illegal to preach against sin. Preach against that community. Old-fashioned preaching will soon be classified as hate crime. Yep. But I'm so thankful today that it's not. Amen. So thankful today that we still have a God we can serve in a mighty God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. So the Bible is really saying that the rights of the Christian are inferior to the rights of the LGBT individual. I think the rights of, you know, we're, everybody's so concerned about the rights, but what about the rights of a Christian? Amen. Right. 
Don't we have the rights to share with Jesus what Amen. this precious holy word has right. to say? Amen. 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 It's getting to the place that's it, it's either black or white. You know, there, there, there's movies out about uh, the, the many different colors of gray and all this sort of stuff, you know. But really, isn't it getting to where it's, it's black or white? Either we're on the Lord's side or not. Either we're afraid to stand for the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ or we're not. You know? 38 years ago, this ministry started. And through it, I've gone through fires, I've gone through floods. We've gone through good times and we've gone through bad times. We've lost loved ones. We've, many of our loved ones have gone on to the other side. We've seen so many different things, but, but I found that what can be shaken will be shaken, but only our faith in God will really last. Amen. Your faith in God and wherever you're at in your walk is what's really going to last. The car that you drive will rust away anyway. The house that you have will finally you know, de depreciate and won't be worth the value of what it was earlier unless you're maybe in a right neighborhood and can keep that old house, you know, where it uh, would do good. There's only one thing that lasts. And that's Jesus, our faith in God. Amen. It's our Amen. family. We want to make sure that that family makes it over to heaven as well as us. Amen. Amen? Our faith in God, our family that's, that we have uh, with us. That this, these are the real things. I kid my one uh, grandson. I actually kid all my grand kid all my grandkids. But go on here today, Jacob. He's uh, just graduated from high school. Jacob, raise your hand there. There you are. Hey, you lift your head. Don't be ashamed about it. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, with all that's been going on, I had not had a chance to meet his little girlfriend. So all summer long, earlier in the summer, and uh, I'd ask him, I said, to, uh, Jacob, uh, are you seeing anybody? And so finally he got tired of telling me your name. He said, uh, yeah, I'm still seeing the same one. <laughs> and believe it or not, that became her name. Because now, every time I see her, all I can't think of her name, I always see same one. <laughs> so we've had a lot of fun with that, same one. Like, Chinese name or something. Like <laughs> but the most important thing in life is our faith in Jesus. Our faith in God is what last. It's going to pull us through. I think of Jacob sitting on the Jason sitting on the back row back there, almost slick headed now. Not completely. <laughs> But when I first got to know him, he was good friends with my son Brian, and his hair was down to about halfway of his back. It's funny how we look through time and we see how they change. Just give him a little time, they'll grow up. Give him a little time, you'll all fall off or out. Amen. How we worry about some things that just give a little time, have a little patience. It'll all work out. Um, Gloria's husband never passed away with cancer, my good friend of mine on the railroad. And uh, he was in the Royal Rangers program. And he came and helped our church back in its beginning trying to get the Royal Rangers there. And there was a little boy that followed him around, Robbie. That uh, now grown up and, and uh, changed a whole lot. Changed a whole lot. It's funny how God works things out. Yeah. Changes things. Changes things. When I think of Tim and Angel, and Tim was saying that I that uh, he uh, didn't really want to come in church and listen to me preach the gospel. He can stay outside until youth church. And uh, it just didn't look good for Angel. I didn't say it didn't look good for Angel. I said it just didn't look good. Yeah, it didn't look 
Well, what I'm trying to say is that it just looked like Andy was, was going down the wrong road. Amen. Well, you know, one day he'd be the youth pastor, one day he'd be the pastor. You never know what God's going to do. Amen. Amen. Always have hope and faith in God. Amen. Amen. Things change. Hallelujah. Things change. There's a, but with all the worries that's going on, and believe me, if this message was is as much for me, and I preached a little bit of it on, on Wednesday night down at the old caboose, they asked me to preach down there. This was what was laid on my heart, because these were things that were bothering me. All the fighting going on, the anger that I was building up, and, and trying to keep things from coming into hatred, and just, you know, it seemed like I was all... All you heard on the radio or the TV, so you'd get around people and it's all they talked about and just begin to fill me up with bitterness about the whole thing. Bitterness, you know, that even it was affecting family, bitterness. And not that I was doing anything necessarily wrong, but just it was just something that was going on inside of me that I just, you know, and I found that I just needed to look to Jesus, no me and my wife pray every day, every morning. If time allows, we read our scriptures together. So it wasn't a matter of backsliding. It was a matter of just, you know, the, 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 the world caving in. Have you ever felt that? The world caving in. Maybe the world's the same way right now. It may not be what I'm talking about, but you're, but you're just going through a tough time right now. Looking at Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. A brother that's been going... Through, uh, through uh, uh, cancer is here with us today. It's so good to see you here. Praise God. And God's still giving you a good report. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may have all that on your, on, your, on your shoulders when you're thinking of these things. Well, I'm going to close with a scripture in Romans, the 8th chapter. In the 8th chapter, it speaks up above it about who can condemn us if God is for us. All these sort of things. Who can separate us from the love of God. And tribulation, and distress, and persecution, and famine, and sickness, and, and peril or sword. None of those things can separate us from the love of God. That's right. Verse 30 says, they in all these things, the things that we're going through, and all these things that, that bother us, and all these things that, that just is a burr under our saddle, you know? A thorn in our side. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. See, I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. You know why? Because Christ already died for us. Amen. Amen. He already took our place on Calvary. And every, every stinking, rotten sin that has happened or will happen, the Lord's already made a way if they'll personally just say, Lord, forgive me. God will forgive them. Be justified, redeemed, bought back. Redeemed from the devil. Yes. Bought back from a child of the devil to a child of God. Yes. Slayed, wiped clean. That's what we have. God doesn't see our sins. Hallelujah. They're forgiven. Amen. They're gone as far as the east is from the west. It's funny how the devil always labels us by our sins, but God labels us by his righteousness. Amen. Amen. How the world can still point out your faults. But through the blood of Jesus, you're made perfect. Your sinners through Jesus. But in this it says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life. Anybody experienced anybody who's recently passed away? And I know this is very sensitive for some, but you know, that you're going through those things. I'm persuaded that neither death nor life. Angels or principalities or powers or things present or things to come. Nor heights or depths or any other creature.
will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. People, that's where we're at. As men and women of faith, young boys and girls of faith, whatever we're walking through, understand that God's with you and God cares for you. God loves you. Amen? That you're more than a conqueror through Christ. What you're going through, you're going to go through. Amen. There is another, the other side. Amen. You are coming through it. Amen. God's put that in you. He's instilled that in you to help you to know that God's with you and he's going to help you through whatever you're going through. You're going to go through. Even as Jesus come walking on those troubled waters, it is only trouble for man, but not for him. He came walking on top of our troubles. And our Lord comes, still comes walking on our troubles on top of them. Because victory is in Jesus. Amen. Victory is in Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. The song that kind of rings in my head, and I'm not a singer, so forgive me if it ruins the end of this message. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his somebody know it. Wonderful things and the things of this world shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glorious grace. Amen. Just need to turn our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn your eyes to the Lord. Heavenly Father, take this message and use it for your glory. This one that's going through troubled waters. Others, Lord, that are still torn up with situations. Let them find the peace that's in God today. I ask right now in the name of the Lord. Will you place your hand on your heart and pray this with me? Heavenly Father, I belong to you. Because of Jesus, the Son of God, who has forgiven me of my sins. Your blood has blotted it all out. Thank you, Lord. For loving, me. for loving me. Help me, Lord, Help me, Lord to, forgive. to forgive. Don't let me hold bitterness. Don't let me hold bitterness. Help me to serve you Help me to serve the, you. Best the best I know how. And everyone say amen. 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 Tim, amen. Pastor Tim. Thank you, Brother Mike. Hallelujah. Such a wonderful word from the Lord. And a timely word, amen? amen. And a timely word from the Lord. As they lead us in in song this morning before we close out the service. I want to open up the altars. If you want to come and just spend some time with the Lord and, and seek His face this morning as they lead us, then the altars are open. If you, if you need special prayer this morning, then, then Pastor Mike or myself, we will be glad to pray with you and, and believe together, amen, for an answer to prayer. Hallelujah. You know, I shared something this past Wednesday. We was talking, we was in uh, Acts chapter 11, I believe it was. And we was talking about when we're confronted with criticism. And, and I told this kind of humorous story about Brother Mike. I said, you know, when, when, when God called me into this, into the ministry here to, to take over as pastor, I was kind of nervous because, you know, it, he had come to me and said, is it okay if I stay? And I'm like, well, of course. You know, why would I say no? You know, he's been here for 36 years. Why would I, why would I say no? And, and but, but in, in, in my spirit and in the back of my mind, I was so nervous because I was like, now I know I've been here as his youth pastor for 15, 16 years, whatever it was, but I thought, I'm kind of afraid that he's going to criticize everything I do, you know, I'm just kind of worried about that. And, and, I, and I was for a while, but the only thing he ever did was this, he'd sit on the front row there, and this is kind of a thing we used to do when he was up here on the platform, he would look at me and go, while I'm preaching, and make that face. There's kind of a story behind that, and uh, if you've been here for years, you would have noticed him doing that. So it, rather than criticize me or give me a hard way to go on anything, that's the only thing he would do. And uh, so I thought it was humorous, amen, but that's the pastor that we've had here for all these years, and I, I'm so uh, appreciative of his ministry, and I'm so uh, thankful that God has allowed me to step into this, this ministry and to follow behind him in the ministry and, and take over 
and just allow God to lead. It's not that I'm taking over. It's not that he stepped down. It's that God just changed gears. Amen. And he just decided to do something different. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm so thankful. Thankful for you all that are here. Those that came and sang today. And I pray that you stay with us and, and eat and we talk and fellowship and have a good time. Amen. But let, let's just worship for just a moment. I know it's late, but just for a moment. And, and if you need special prayer, please, please, we would love to pray for you. If you're uncomfortable coming forward, then just wave a hand and we'll pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The altars are open. I encourage you to come and seek the Lord's face this morning. Hallelujah.